And we are live once again. Good morning, church. Thanks uh, be to God for giving us this wonderful day, isn't it? We have uh, sunshine outside and we feel the heat of the weather. <laughs> it's warm right now. But glory to be, uh, uh, praise be to God that we have this Sunday worship morning service. And let's pray. Let's have a moment of silence. Let's pray for this service to be a channel of blessing. And prepare our hearts to receive the word of God that he stored for us this uh, full day of serving the Lord. Amen. So I would like to read some verses from the scripture while you are praying. In Psalms 113, the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord, praise O ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this time forth and forevermore. And verse 3, For the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. So let's have a prayer. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, truly, O Lord, Sunday is your day. Truly, O Lord, we are here inside this church. And for our folks who are tuning in, O Lord God, our main goal is to worship thee in spirit and in truth, O Lord God. Lord, forgive us, O Lord, for the things that we committed against thee. Cleanse our hearts and make us worthy, O Lord, to receive thy word today. And I pray, Lord, that you continue to, uh, to bless our hearts. Um, we want to bless your name first, O Lord God, because uh, you are so faithful, O Lord, in us. And thank you, Lord, for your um, grace and mercy that always available, O Lord, and that endures forever, O Lord, for, for us. And Lord, um, we commit to you everything, O Lord, um, this very moment, O Lord God, and we also are praying, O Lord, that you continue to be with our services, O Lord, for the full day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Okay, so good morning once again. Hey, amen. amen. So are you alive, awake, enthusiastic? Hey. Amen. Hope that you had your breakfast, heavy breakfast, and ready to worship God this morning. And welcome once again to everyone and for our folks who are in their um, respective uh, places. Okay, so may I request everyone please to stand as we sing... Um, Praises to our Lord. Let's see. My faith has found a resting place. Hymn number one. My faith has found a resting place. Okay, on the first now. My faith has found a resting place. Not in device or creed. I trust the ever-living one. His words for me shall be. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that He died for me. Enough for me that Jesus saves. This ends my fear and have a sinful soul. I came to Him. He'll never cast me. through his blood I need no other argument I need no other plea it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me the statement here it is enough that Jesus died he died for us he died for our sin for us to have that eternal gift amen so praise the Lord. And he rose again after three days. Okay, so let's sing another song, Sunshine in My Soul. Is there sunshine in your soul today? And so after this, I'd like to request Brother Bobby to open us in a word of prayer. Okay, on the first night. 
now. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than most in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light, better sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. Oh, this I have. There's music in my soul today. For when the Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my heart. The flowers of grace appear. Oh, there's When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. On the third, there is gladness in my soul today, and hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now, for joys laid up above. Order sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. Amen. Good singing, brethren. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word that revealed to us that we can come boldly to your throne of grace because of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We know, dear God, that your word also tell us that our God is a holy God. Our God is faithful. Our God is all wise, and our God is righteous and holy. And so, God, as before we continue to praise you and serve you and worship you this morning, we humble ourselves once again, Lord, to ask forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed, things that are not pleasing to you. And we just pray to God that you search our hearts and purify us so that today will not be a wasted time that today will be a blessing for our souls. Lord, as we sing songs and uh, listen to the preaching of your word and the message of the special number, may it be, Lord, we pray that we will be a sweet-smelling savor to you. Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we know we are so blessed. We have salvation. We have eternal life. The reason we are here, oh God, is we just want to thank you so much for all those blessings that we are not even worthy of, but because of your unconditional love, we are here. And so, Lord, help us to try our best, give our best this morning to serve you, to praise you, and to make your name known to people, people who do not know you. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bobby, for that wonderful prayer. Please remain standing. Can you say hi to your brethren, to our brethren here inside the church? Okay, and greet them. Good morning, everyone. Amen. So praise the Lord. Good to see everyone. And let's sing another song. So let's give our best to the Lord in singing. Amen. So let's sing uh, this song, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. Let's sing it from our hearts. Okay, it's a wonderful song, wonderful message. 362. Okay, on the first now. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in Him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how He changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do No one ever 
cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Amen. Let's sing it. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as him. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me on the last. Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Till someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Amen. What a wonderful message of the song, isn't it? Amen. You may not be seated and let's listen to our word.
Amen. Were you blessed by the message of that song? Amen. Come as you are unto Jesus, but you will live change, isn't it? If you will just open your heart and your mind and be yielded and submitted to him. Uh, thank you so much, choir, for singing for the glory of God. Uh, we know those um, songs has been a blessing to us in a personal way, and we would like to also share it to uh, God's people here in Bergen and to all our friends and brethren. And this is uh, one thing that we will uh, do for all eternity, isn't it? Yeah. To sing praises to our Most High and okay. only true living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, thank God that uh, that invitation is still you know, active and it's still ongoing today. Christ is inviting people to come unto Him. Those who don't have... Uh, any assurance of forgiveness of sin and uh, a place in heaven and eternal life is still inviting people to be saved. And for those Christians that are weary and heavy burdened and heavily laden with some cares of this world, we can always come to Jesus anytime, anywhere, isn't it? And uh, thank God for that great invitation from the Lord. And that's something we can always share, isn't it? Uh, the Lord inviting all men to come to himself. And we just need to lift him up. So people will be drawn to him. So uh, thank you for being with us today. Uh, such a wonderful day. We are um, feeling, experiencing the, the brink of summer, even though it's not officially summer yet. Uh, we thank God that it's only three months, you know. Uh, <laughs> like the South or Florida, they have this kind of weather almost all year long. But uh, for us who uh, grew up in the Philippines, this is no surprise, isn't it? This, uh, we're no stranger with the uh, hot, humid weather, but we praise and thank God for the sunshine. It means the grace of God and, and the mercy of God is still around, isn't it? He still wants people to, to be saved, and he wants Christians and his people to continue to live for him and know him more and share um, the gospel. And are you blessed last weekend? Uh, not only we had a long weekend for Memorial Day weekend as we um, remember our fallen uh, service women and men uh, who had served this country for its uh, freedom's sake for many, many years and even ongoing right now. But also we had our annual evangelism conference. We're so blessed, amen, by the messages, the word of God, by um, the servants of the Lord whom he has used to share God's word. I hope we were inspired. I hope we were able to pray more for our unsaved blabons and friends. So we give God all the glory continue to pray for their ministry. Also, we want to thank God for our, um, of course, uh, prayer chain ministry yesterday. Thank you for all who had prayed for the many needs in our church and our um, community and in this world for all the prayer requests that was poured in. And we thank God for all the answered prayers. So today is a great day, first day of the week to uh, worship the Lord in spirit and truth. And I hope you are prepared to hear God's word, and you are um, excited to learn more about him and uh, to continue to uh, prepare us for the preaching of God's word. We have a special music from two of our sisters in the Lord. Uh, we thank God for their lives and for a song that God has put in their heart to share unto us. So let me call Sister Alice and Sister Sally. 
to come and uh, bless us with uh, the word of God through this song. Then afterwards, uh, Pastor Max will come and uh, share the word of God. Also special, I believe. Thank you. That is uh, the great truth that cannot be denied. Amen? Amen. God's word changes lives. Amen. The lost will find salvation. And the, uh, the fool become wise. <laughs> Indeed. Well, thank you so much, Alice. 
And this is Sally. I know we just practiced that song yesterday. It's not that easy. But at least, uh, you know, they, had, they tried their best to please God. Amen? Amen. And we've all been blessed by that song. Good morning, my beloved in the Lord. How's uh, God's people today, God's children today? How in the world are you? Uh, it is my pleasure and joy to share the word of God today, whatever God wants us to hear today, uh, whatever he wants us to admonish and exhort today. But before the message, uh, I'd like to share to you a song. And this particular song was only like composed by uh, the, uh, uh, the Gaither local band back in 2016 by uh, Bill Gaither. And uh, as we all know that secret things belongs, belong to God. And uh, revealed things belong to us. Now, there are a lot of things in life, unpleasant things at that, that we do not know why, as God's children, happening to us. But uh, the Lord will reveal it to us, beloved, by and by. Amen? The Lord will, will talk it over to us in the regions beyond. Eh? And uh, the title of the song is, We'll Talk It Over in Dubai and By. <clears throat> I hope you like the song as well. Mm. Talking. 
to the folks can be found in the book of uh, Second Peter from uh, the great apostle Peter chapter 3 verses 17 to 18 only two verses beloved and I entitled my message today our annual spiritual checkup could you please rise as we read uh, this passage of scriptures together Again, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Did you find it, folks? Amen. Okay, amen. So let's start reading now. The Bible says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Let's bow our heads forever. I mean, uh, with, I mean, in prayer, I should say. Our great God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh God, that we can be reminded that once more from the scriptures, Lord, from the Holy Word, that as blood, both believers, our supposed to be our constant desire, Lord, how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit, O oh God, this time to remind us that knowledge without grace is terrible uh, weapon. And grace without knowledge can be very shallow as well. But when we combine grace and knowledge, Lord, we have a marvelous tool, marvelous blessings for building our lives, and also for building the church. We thank you, O oh God, again for allowing me to preach your word, and I pray, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit be working in our midst today, in our hearts, and even those who are watching in this live stream program as well, O oh God, that you would be blessed and save the lost today. In his name we pray, amen. Amen. You be seated now. We praise God that we are now in the uh, middle of the year. Amen? Now, many of us have an uh, annual uh, physical checkup. It is, uh, of course, uh, very important because the doctor, you know, uh, checks us thoroughly. And after the examination, he tells us how we stand physically. And uh, this is good uh, to do at least uh, once a year. But in our case, uh, our family doctor would require us uh, sometimes like uh, uh, quarterly or sometimes two times a year. And uh, but praise the Lord that we can always call our Medicare, our, our medications, and then they would uh, ship it to us. But if, if they need uh, new prescriptions from the doctor, we just call up the doctor. You know, it's just very important that every now and then we have to uh, uh, check our physical condition. Uh, even my A1C, that's very important. That I have to keep tracking on this. Our nurses, medical people, they know this, what is the A1C. And uh, this is the blood sugar content. And uh, there was one time that my A1C like shoot into 12. That was too high. The doctor was so mad. And uh, he, uh, you know, uh, uh, scolded me. And he said, uh, what, what, what are these food that you're eating this time? You know? And uh, I told him that I'm only eating orange juice, doctor. So how many orders you eat every day? But at any rate, uh, thank God that uh, for medications also, the Lord is so good that it lowered my uh, A1C right away by refraining eating or, you know, drinking sweet uh, uh, food. Now, let me get some water. My tongue is dry again. 
So let's be important, beloved, that if you're not on there, our doctor will check that up physically. It is also, on the other hand, uh, good that we do a spiritual checkup uh, periodically. Amen? Amen. To see how we stand spiritually. Now, beloved, I am going to mention a few of the things that we need to consider as, uh, you know, we do a personal examination of our spiritual life. When it comes to our spiritual growth, beloved, there are some things that will stunt, you know, our growth, like would hinder our growth. Now, we all know uh, people who got gloriously saved, but uh, uh, since that their spiritual birth, they have not grown spiritually, and that's a lamentable uh, commentary. On the other hand, I have seen others as well that got saved and they had tremendous, you know, growth after their conversion. Now, let me share a few things that uh, if we do not practice, beloved, they can stunt, they can hinder our spiritual, uh, our growth spiritually. And I call and have been challenged uh, to all members of Bergen Bible Baptist Church who are still residing in the state of New Jersey. Please do not use this uh, pandemic outbreak as your excuse not to come to church, not to come to the house of worship and fellowship and prayer. Amen? Amen. Uh, In the state of New Jersey, beloved, uh, they already approved uh, up to, at the capacity of 50 people, you know, and so it's not a problem anymore. Just a matter of calling Pastor Abel that he would be coming over to join us in our services. And uh, we can accommodate you here. Now, the, the Comia family, Brother Hickler and his family, they traveled that far just to join us this morning. And praise God for that. Now we have to travel from now on. My wife and I would see to it not only to see our grandchildren, but also to be at the house of God every weekend, every time the church doors open, particularly Sunday. And we are about, we're like an hour and a half travel, folks. And maybe you are just a few miles away from our place, our church here. Please, I beg of you, join us. Amen? Amen. I know uh, uh, the, in the state of New Jersey, there's six feet, uh, uh, you know, social distancing already lifted up, lifted. Uh, so uh, there's no more six feet uh, social distancing anymore. But also, of course, you still have to wear a mask indoor, you know. Now, uh, uh, we see here, there are similar things that we'd like to, to study here when it comes to uh, this uh, title, Our Annual Spiritual Checkup. First of all, we must exercise. By that, uh, I mean do, do something for the Lord. Amen? Amen? We have to do something for the Lord. Some research was done on 260,000 children corresponded to uh, the uh, Change for Life campaign uh, pool or survey or census uh, before the pandemic or prior to the pandemic outbreak. The results showed that nearly three quarters, like 72% of children don't take part in the recommended hour of daily activity outside school. Change for Life was launched in uh, January to tackle soaring rates of obesity by promoting healthy eating and exercise. That was again prior to the pandemic outbreak. And its latest poll also found 45% of youngsters, they watch uh, TV uh, or play non-active video games before school. The public health minister said our survey shows that kids just aren't getting up and about as much as they should 
if we're going to cut obesity levels, our children need to be active for at least 60 minutes a day. By eating better and moving more, and we can all live longer and healthier lives. Now, this problem, beloved, is much bigger than uh, people realize, than folks realize. Because even worse, during this pandemic outbreak, beloved, like a year ago, uh, that some blue states, uh, I would say the Democrats, uh, that schools are still closed, even up to this present times. They're still doing uh, the online schooling. And then no activities, no ex exercise. So obviously kids are gaining their weights. That's sad, isn't it? And thank God that our grandchildren here, uh, they're also online schooling, but thank God that they never gain weights. Uh, but they are getting taller, and praise God for that. Eh? And some of the kids in our, in our church, because our pa the parents here in our church, they know how to feed the children, the kind of food. Eh? No more chocolates, no more ice creams. Eh? <laughs> now, uh, um, that, that's, that's not good at all, isn't it? On Fox News channel, one of the doctors that uh, they had on uh, Fox and Friends said that they have uh, discovered that obesity leads to 11 different kinds of cancer. Wow, that's scary. Now listen folks, exercise is something that we can put off, but later it can lead to some serious problems for, some, for people physically. And there's no doubt about it. When you think of bodily exercise, you think of, uh, you know, running, you think of jogging, you think of uh, jumping, uh, perhaps sit-ups, push-ups, uh, uh, lifting weights and swimming and walking. There is nothing wrong with keeping our physical body in shape, isn't it? In good shape. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, as we think of the value of keeping our physical bodies in good shape, beloved, but then again, we also need to keep our spiritual bodies in good shape. Right. Could I amen to that? Amen. Our spiritual bodies in good shape. After telling you how important physical exercise is, then I want to tell you, beloved, that the Bible teaches that there is something more important. Because physical exercise is not as important as spiritual exercise. Don't you know that? In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Apostle Paul said to young Timothy, For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. That verse, beloved, of Scripture teaches us that bodily or physical exercise is good for us to participate in. But it only has a little value for us. In what way? When we compare to godliness. Amen? When we compare it to godliness, because which is our spiritual exercise that we learn as we study God's Word. Amen? Now, why does God's word exalt spiritual above all things? There are several things that we need to consider, beloved. First of all, physical exercise helps our heart, you know, stay in uh, condition, builds up, uh, you know, your muscles and helps control one's weight. You can have a heart in good condition, muscles uh, built, you know, all around your body through body exercise. But one thing for sure, beloved, your soul, if your soul is not saved by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I would tell you right now that the body exercise has done nothing for your soul's salvation. Amen? 
Because exercising your body is good, but it will not get you to heaven. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Second of all, physical exercise has only a little value when compared to godliness. Because why? Because our physical bodies are like the grass. The grass and flowers, you know, and soon, they, they soon uh, fade and pass away, isn't it? It's like what the Bible says. They wither it, they wither it away. Now, a pastor, there was a story of a pastor was invited to visit a large uh, hog farm or piggery. And this man had uh, 1,200 hogs, 1,200 pigs. He kept them in a building on a concrete floor in a small pens that appeared to be like three, three by five feet. And he would pour the feed to these pigs, to these hogs, and they could not run or exercise. And all they could do was uh, what? Eat and uh, get fat. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the hogs and the pigs probably thought, you know, we have been made. This crazy farmer you know, loves us so much that all we have to do is eat and sleep. But when they went to the butcher, huh, they found out this farmer did not care for them at all. <laughs> huh? All he cared about was making money of them. So, beloved, our spiritual life is forever. Amen? Amen. As a matter of fact, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 to 25, the Bible says that who his own son or who his own self bear our sins in his uh, own body on the tree, uh, that uh, we being dead to sins should, should live unto righteousness, and by his stripes we were, ye were healed. And then in, uh, that's in the verse in verse uh, 25. Now, beloved, think of this. When this uh, two thoughts in mind, we understand, including the first Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, that body exercise profited nothing or profited little. Uh, think of this. Uh, we do not use this as an excuse for not exercising at all, huh? Because physical, of course, again, physical exercise uh, does have some value to it. As a matter of fact, many young people today uh, exercise a great deal. And if you talk uh, to them about aches and pains, they look at you and, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, what are you talking about? Uh, we're still young. We don't experience the pains and aches at all. Huh? I do not have a pain in my body. It is probably because they exercise every muscle in their body as God intended us to do. I've learned from uh, that brother Christian Bautista, I've learned from his, his dad, from his father, uh, that uh, he is now uh, lifting weights. Huh? Lifting weights, uh, of course, to build up his muscles. And that's good, uh, brother Christian. Hmm? So that no one could bully you when, when every time they would see those muscles, huh? But uh, we older folks, we older people can do the slightest amount of work. And then what will happen? The next day, uh, the next day we are so sore that we can hardly move. Uh, and one reason for that is because we do not exercise our muscles enough. Uh, uh, old people? Do we have some old people here except myself? Uh, mm? We do not assess our body, uh, you know, uh, hardly, uh, hardly enough. Uh, we forgot that we had them until we did something, and all of a sudden we are so sore. We can hardly move. Then what will happen? Then Mr. Bingay. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ben, 
Yay, eh? Or salumpas, eh? Becomes our best friend. Is a muscle pain reliever. To ease the pain. Now this reminds me of uh, the story of these two old guys from a retirement home who were sitting on a bench under a tree when one turns to the other and says, you know, I'm 85 years old. I'm 85 years old now, and I'm just full of aches and pains all the time. I feel like I'm falling apart. And then he said to the other guy, Charlie, I know you're about my age. How do you feel? And then uh, Charlie uh, responded or replies, you know, I feel just like a newborn baby. <laughs> and then the first guy said, really, like a newborn baby? And said, the second guy, Charlie, said, yes. No hair. No teeth. Uh, and I think I just wet my pants this time. Now listen, beloved. God tells us these bodies are made to work six days. And then what? Rest one. If I am not mistaken, beloved, that is not suggestion but a command, isn't it? That is a command. When we do not stay active, beloved, we are sending a message to our bodies they are, that we are shutting down. And those strong muscles will wither up. And then physically, we need to stay busy or we will get weaker and weaker. And then we come to the, it will come a time that you won't be able to do something anymore. Huh? Then you need a wheelchair. Huh? That's sad scenario. I don't want to have happened it to me. I'm still young, you know. You know, thank God, folks. Thank God that uh, we have a loan to be mob. Huh? We have a loan to be mob. We have chickens to uh, be fed. Every day, uh, we have some garden. We have some gardens to dig out, uh, to make for for my wife and I get busy. In our place, beloved, uh, we uh, don't run out of uh, things to do. Uh, we always have to, we always have something to do. And kami magasawa, sabi ng nila, ulan lang ang aming pahinga. Uh, only when we need rain, then there's a time that we have to rest because we cannot do something outside. Uh. Inactivity, beloved, is not good for us physically. Amen? N nor it is good for us spiritually as well. If you are not active or you are inactive spiritually speaking then it's not good the reason we have so many weak and frail Christians nowadays in the church because why because of spiritual inactivity right. all over this nation even before the pandemic outbreak beloved church buildings are filled with weak frail Christians week after week goes by and they do not do anything for the Lord. And they have not uh, grown in the Lord for years at all. And again, that's lamentable. That's a sad scenario. There must be a reason behind it. We know to develop our muscles, we have to exercise them. And that the same thing, beloved, applies to our spiritual bodies. Could I amen to that? Maybe you are thinking, what can I do, Pastor Max? There are a lot of things that you, can, you, you cannot do, but there are some things that you can do. Amen? In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, the wisest man who ever lived in the face of the earth, King Solomon, he said that uh, whatever you find to do, with your hands, do it. Right. 
with all your might. C could you project that, uh, brother? Okay. There you go. With thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Now, folks, look at the word whatsoever. Because I believe anything you find to do, you need to do it. Do it as unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Look at the words in the grave whither thou goest. In the grave whither thou goest. You can't do anything anymore. Because you're dead. Huh? What the Bible is teaching, beloved, is if there is something you can do for the Lord, then God is telling us you have to do it now before it's too late. Because when you die, you won't be able to do it. Again, it will be too late. And today, if the dead could come back, there are, I believe, many things that they would do. But it's too late, isn't it, for them to do that? The, because in in the, the place beyond this life, either hell or heaven, there is no exit. Only entrance. Yeah? And they cannot go back to earth anymore. Their day to do these things has come and gone. And that's why we need to do things that we can do. My beloved, my challenge to you uh, this morning, do not concern yourself with things that you cannot do. Amen? Amen. Just do things that you can do. You know, I have nothing but admiration when I go to the hospitals and see retired men and women. Uh, volunteering and giving their time to help others. But while they are helping others, they are also helping themselves, isn't it? Because they can do some exercise as well. And it would please the Lord. They could find a good, I would say, lazy boy, you know, chair to sit in, but they know that God tells us to work six and rest one. And that's what Apostle Peter says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of the, our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, folks, in the gym, they have a saying, no pain, no gain. Show me a Christian that is not doing anything for the Lord, and I will tell you, beloved, and I will show you a weak, frail Christian. Amen? Amen. Exercise is essential to a physical and a spiritual growth. And that is why we must exercise spiritually or we will wither away, spiritually speaking. Because God commanded that we gather and worship him. But beloved, God had uh, more in mind when he created us than for us to just sit on a church pew each Sunday. It should be beyond that. You have to do something about it, not just sitting on the pews, not doing anything. So we, we must exercise the second thing here that we have to do, we must eat. By that, I mean, uh, take God's word into our lives. Amen. Amen? Amen? Eating, beloved, is a popular thing to do, isn't it? Especially among Baptists. <laughs> among Christians, we love to eat. Huh? Most of us do it at least three times a day or daily. And sometimes more than that, isn't it? Yeah. We love to eat, but we also eat because we know to be healthy is in this life, we have to eat uh, daily. 
for us to survive physically. The way we eat, beloved, or don't eat uh, shows how devoted we are to being healthy physically. Isn't it? Huh? If we do not eat healthy foods regularly, I would say some serious trouble is on the way. It is only a matter of time. You know, uh, I have not eaten ice cream for months now. Every time, <laughs> every time my wife and I would do uh, food shopping, every time we pass by that ice cream uh, section, I feel like getting some, you know. But uh, my nutritionist would say, no, 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 no. Uh, it's not good for you. But yesterday, yesterday, Pastor Jeter <laughs> brought some ice creams in the backyard. And uh, thank you, Pastor Jeter. He gave me like a, a cup of ice cream. <laughs> and then uh, Sister Amy said, oh, it's all right, Pastor Max. <laughs> it's all right to eat as long as you drink a lot of water, okay? <laughs> so I had that cup of ice cream yesterday. I enjoy it so much. Huh? But I check uh, my blood uh, sugar today, this morning. It's okay. Huh? It's okay. Huh? Thank God. Huh? So I need st still to eat more ice cream. Huh? <laughs> my wife is watching now. Uh, again, it's a no, no, no. I thank God for my wife. She's a good, uh, you know, nutritionist. She's a do good doctor to her husband. So, beloved, there are many in our society that have what is known as an eating disorder. Don't you know that? Right. Have you heard of uh, the word, the name, anoxphia? Huh? <laughs> an anorexia? Anorexia, beloved, a physical disorder is a serious, potential, deadly medical disorder characterized by self-starvation, eventually leading to significant energy and nutrient deficiencies, cardiovascular and problems, bone problems, and muscle and organ uh, wasting. About 10 to 20 percent of people, most women, eh? most women, that suffer from this disorder will die because of the complications it brings. How about the, uh, the name bulimia nervosa? Uh, our nurses here and some doctors, they know. Uh, those medical people, they, they know this term bulimia nervosa. This is the physical disorder. It's an illness with uh, recurrent compulsive uh, episodes of dense eating followed by self-induced vomiting and or purging with uh, laxatives. And this disorder is also very dangerous. It can lead to stomach and esophagus problems, dental problems as well, and death is about 1% of cases. In other words, beloved, uh, excessive, excessive eating and drinking or taking drugs forced, and then they would force themselves, you know, to vomit, to avoid uh, weight gain. That's dangerous, isn't it? Uh, what for? They would eat a lot of stuff and then they, they would like to take it out, uh, vomit it. Uh. Now, beloved, I mentioned this eating disorders to share with you that they are to be taken seriously. And I thank God in our church we don't have that kind of people, isn't it? Now, Christians with the spiritual eating disorders need to take this seriously as well. Show me a Christian that has lost his spiritual appetite for the Word of God. And I'm telling you right now, I will show you uh, a weak 
frail Christian as well. Those who do not feed of, of God's word and obey it will never reach. We never reach, we never come their full potential to grow to be a strong Christian. Could I even do that? Yeah. Now, a group of tourists had uh, stopped to visit in a uh, rather picturesque uh, village. And they happened across an early man, elderly man, who was sitting on a bench in the town square. And one of the tourists uh, asked that old man, were any great men born here? Were any great men uh, born in this place? Without hesitation, the old gentleman answered, nope, just babies. Now, we have some great Christians, beloved, in the church. But I can tell you up front, they were not, be, they were not uh, you know, born great. Again, that's sad. You might be upset with me to say this, to say that. They were born just like anyone else, but after the spiritual birth, they got involved in the things of God, and we call this spiritual exercise. They got involved in eating spiritual food from the Word of God, and we call this eating properly spiritually. Huh? Now they are not weak and frail. And they are strong Christians, mature. They're grounded in the faith. We all are born babies. But beloved, after we are born in these bodies, I believe, uh, you know, a lot is determined by now that we, you know, exercise them, we feed them. Amen. So what happens to people who are dying? We know that they don't have any appetite at all for food. You can even cook uh, the best delicious looking steak and has ever been cooked and put it before them. And I'm telling you, they will, they will turn their head and not even want to look at it. Why? Because they have no appetite for food. And this is the way some uh, sick folks are when it comes to physical appetite. But the same thing, beloved, can be said of some spiritual, uh, or some people spiritually speaking here. They once had an appetite for spiritual food. They were in church every time the doors were opened. But now... The only way they can be fed the word of God is to what we call be forced fed. Pinipilit natin sila na kumain. Ayan ang malungkot mga kapatid, di ba? Matagal ng kristyano. Matagal ng masayang mananang palatiya. Matagal ng tumanggap sa Panginoon. But hindi sila lumalago. Kapaano? Hindi, hindi kanila hindi, hindi nila Paruti ang pag, paglago sa Panginoon. All across this country, we have people who are dying spiritually. And every one of them has a spiritual disorder when it comes to, I would say, the appetite for the Word of God. Wala ang sound pa? Thank you, Brother Gilbert. In the natural, if a person, I believe, goes without food, then I would say weakness, confusion, a chronic uh, diarrhea, uh, irritability, bad uh, decision making, decrease uh, in sex uh, drive and immune deficiency, maybe experience. Advanced starvation will cause your organs to shut down one by one. So we must exercise, we must eat. Last but not least, beloved, we must rest. By that I mean uh, sat at the feet of Jesus. Amen? 
Exercise, beloved, and eating nutritious food is essential. But also, it is essential that we rest at the feet of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, when it comes to resting, I think of uh, Mary. In the Gospel according to Luke uh, chapter 10, 38 to 42, the story of uh, the two sisters, Mary and Martha. Uh, Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus, she had a sister called Martha, who thought it was more important to do other things other than resting at the feet of the Savior. Uh, and Martha complained. She complained to the Lord that Mary was not doing as she, she was doing. And I believe Martha probably uh, thought Jesus was going to rebuke Mary. But it, it was the other way around. Because but instead, instead the Lord rebuked Martha and told her that Mary had chosen the right thing to do. There are many Christians, beloved, like Martha, that feel that they have more important things to do than sit at the feet of our Savior, the feet of Jesus. They are making the same mistake uh, Martha made. And again, it's sad to say. Now, how, the question, beloved, this morning, how tired are you? How tired are you? You know, recent studies have shown that the average American doesn't get nearly enough sleep. You believe that? Eh? Employers uh, are concerned about uh, this. And that is why, as a result, uh, some business, businesses give their employers breaks so they can be more productive in this place of work, in the place what they're doing. Now, we are a people who need uh, rest, and not just physically. More importantly, we need spiritual rest as well. Amen? Amen. And sometimes we wonder if uh, we'll ever get uh, a break. But, beloved, there is hope. There is hope. The words that Jesus has for us today are indeed great words for weary people. What words? What encouragement that we could hear from our Savior? He said, come unto me. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You'll find it in Matthew 11, verse 28. Now, folks, when we sit at the feet of Jesus, we can find what? We can find uh, uh, emotional rest. We can find physical rest. Amen? Amen. We can find uh, spiritual rest as well. Another reason many Christians are weak and frail is because we have too many Marthas, I would say, today who think that there are more important things to do than to sit at the feet of Jesus. And that's why in Matthew chapter 11, verses 29 to 30, our Savior says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And in verse 30, he said that, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, beloved, spiritually, if most Christians do a spiritual examination from time to time. I believe most Christians would admit that there are th some things that are stunting or hindering them, hindering their spiritual growth. And what uh, they need to do is recognize their need for these things. Amen. And again, I, I beg of those, particularly members of Bergen Baptist Church, if you are still living in the state of New Jersey, our pastor here, our senior pastor, is begging also. Please join us. What hinders you uh, to come to the place of worship? Our deacons as well are praying for you. Please join us. Thank God for our attendance today. 
Huh? Thank God for people today who are here today. Because you love the Lord. You want to hear more about uh, his message. How to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So again, beloved, uh, we see here that we must exercise, do something for the Lord. We must eat, take God's word into our lives, and then we must rest. Sit at the feet of Jesus. I wish I could add more on this, beloved, but we have limited time. And I thank God for Pastor Sam again for giving me this opportunity to preach the word of God. That we just bow our heads, beloved. I hope and pray that you have been blessed, you have been uplifted, you have been encouraged, you have been edified, stirred up by the message today. I hope and pray that you would respond to God's word. God knows your heart. God knows your lives. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart today as your Lord and Savior, then the message is not for you. The message is for you to invite him into your heart and life to become your Lord and Savior. Don't wait until tomorrow because the Bible says that we should not boast our tomorrow for tomorrow may not come. It is appointed unto man who wants to die and after this the judgment. This is the kind of appointment that we cannot cancel, we cannot postpone it. Don't wait no longer. Huh? There is no accident that God brought you here in this place of worship and fellowship. There is no accident that God uh, wants you to hear this message today. I'm telling you right now, there is no other way. If you don't have Christ as Lord and Savior, Christ clearly stated, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me, through me. There is no other way. Not religion. Not the things that you think that you would bring you bring to heaven. It is appointed unto man who wants to die, and after this is judgment. After life, after this life that we have here on earth, there is judgment. If you don't have Christ in your heart right now, then sorry for you. But it's not too late yet. I just want to remind you that the Bible mentioned many times the word hell. There is a place called torments. But there is also a place called heaven for those it's a, it's a prepared place for those who, people who are prepared as well. So my prayer that you would accept Christ today as your Lord and Savior. After the service, you may approach Pastor Sam, you may approach myself, or who are the, our pastors here, Pastor Bell, Pastor Jeter, our deacons as well. If you'd like to invite Jesus, Lord and Savior, it is a pleasure to share to you the Word of God, how to be saved. You have heard many times from Pastor Sam a prayer of acceptance, and I hope that you've done that. <laughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you for Apostle Peter for this great admonition, Lord, and exhortation that we have to constantly grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, O oh Lord, that growing in grace often means experiencing uh, trials and even suffering. We never really uh, experience that grace until we are at the end of our own resources. The lessons learned in the school of grace, O oh God, are always costly lessons, but they are worth it. As thy word stated that to grow in grace means to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ from whom we receive all the grace that we need. As we continuously grow in grace, O oh God, in the knowledge, we ask the Holy Spirit as well, O oh Lord, to help us guarding 
to help us growing and continue to continue to glorifying the making the most of every opportunity to win the lost and to edify the believers as well. Thank you, O oh God, again for your message today. Continue to speak to those who are still outside of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, even those who are here in our midst today and even those who are watching in this live stream program, O oh God, that there is no other way for them to experience heaven other than by trusting, by inviting Jesus to come into his heart and life from Lord and Savior. As he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. What a wonderful promise, O oh God, from thy son. Lord, I pray that you would bless uh, the remaining service, service that we have today. I pray, O oh God, that you get the glory out of this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Sam? Amen to that. Were you blessed by the message of God's word? It's always great to go back to the basics, isn't it? We are encouraged and we were reminded of the grace of God that has saved us. And also that same grace should enable us to grow in uh, the knowledge of the Lord. And the same grace should enable us to, to glow. Let our light so shine, our testimony. Same grace should uh, enable us to go. To tell others about Jesus to witness. Because one of these days will be gone. Isn't it? Amen. By way of the trumpet sound uh, with the rapture or death. So if you're here today, you've never made a decision to trust the Lord. Why not now? We don't hold our lives in our hands. People die every second. Disappointed unto man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. Why not trust Christ right now? It will be the greatest decision that you've ever made in your life. He's the only Savior of the world. And for us as Christians, while we're not raptured yet, while we are not dead yet, we are designed to continue to grow, isn't it? Because Christian life is a process. Our sanctification is uh, a continuous, ongoing process. And by the grace of God, we can be more like him. So we appreciate the message today. And let's keep on um, having good exercise spiritually. And, you know, eating and resting. And uh, we know those ingredients will allow us to continue to know the Lord and make him known. So praise be to God. Let me call our ushers right now. We'll um, have our offering, our way of worship in giving to God what belongs to him. And once again, the, we have new um, guidelines from uh, our state government here. We have more freedom to be in church. Some uh, restrictions are lifted. So we would like to encourage you as obedience to God's command that the Lord's Day is a day that we can come together in worship. And if you are able to do so, why not join us? It's a great way to see our brothers and sisters in the Lord and to reconnect. There's nothing better than, you know, face to face, isn't it? So praise God for those provisions right now. So um, let's give unto the Lord right now with a cheerful heart. Let, uh, let us all stand. As once again we um, sing our doxology, a way of giving thanks to God for all His blessings and His provisions for our church and for our lives. Let's sing it all together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, loving God in heaven, uh, we thank you, Lord, once again uh, for your word that we heard today. Thank you for using uh, Pastor Max to deliver your word. Lord, uh, thank you for uh, your faithfulness, for your loving kindness, for your uh, 
long suffering towards us, Lord. Lord, uh, we pray that you please forgive all of our sins, uh, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, make us worthy, Lord, to approach your throne of grace at this time. Lord, uh, we pray that you uh, uh, accept this uh, tithes and offering that is given. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to bring back uh, the, the talents, the treasures, and the, the everything that you give to us, Lord. Lord, we pray that you bless the the givers, Lord. Uh, help us, Lord, to uh, uh, to give and holding up uh, to give uh, from the bottom of our heart. Make us, Lord, uh, to be a cheerful giver, Lord. And uh, Lord, continue to be with us. To continue to bless us. Continue to keep us safe while we're doing. Uh, our service, Lord. Once again, Lord, we thank you. This all we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 <coughs> thank you, Brother Christian, for the prayer. May all be seated for a while. Just relax and rest. We'll have a few announcements before we have our closing song and prayer. Of course, um, we'd like to uh, celebrate and uh, remember our brethren in the Lord who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Uh, Sister Patricia and Esposa today, uh, send her a greeting, and uh, Nanay Gamutin, Constantia Gamutin on Tuesday, and Brother Simbata on the 10th. So happy, happy birthday to our birthday celebrants. Let's sing a happy birthday song for them as we rejoice in the Lord's faithfulness and goodness in their lives for having another year of life. All right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Let's sing the Christian version. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again means salvation. We're glad you. Congratulations, happy, happy birthday. And of course, the next, we have uh, wedding anniversaries, and I believe the month of June has the most wedding anniversaries among uh, our couples here in the church. But uh, two of them this week, Sister Emya and Brother Manding, who's in our midst today. God bless you. May uh, your marriage be sweeter as the years go by, glowing in the Lord together, serving Him this coming Tuesday. May I ask how many years? Blessed years. 36 years. Look, uh, the woman always uh, answer first, isn't it? The wives, they have good recollection. And uh, 36 years. Wow, praise God. And of course, Sister Sheila and Brother Willie also, same day, June the 8th. So sweeter as the days go by. Uh, praise God for uh, your lives together. And um, we thank God for you. All right, next. These are our teachers, our schedule for our virtual Sunday school this coming uh, afternoon via Zoom. Sister Judith, once again, for the kids. Sister Hazel, and as we always do, the first um, Sunday, our youth among the ladies and the men will join the adults. And the ladies' teacher will be Sister Joan Batong, and for the men, Brother Jackson Sayan. So please uh, tune in and participate, and I know your hearts will be blessed. And thank God for our Sunday school teachers. All right, next, if we have any. Oh, that's it. All right, thank you for uh, those announcements. So let me call uh, Pastor Jeter to please come right now and lead us in our closing song and prayer and benediction. Thank you. Shall we all rise, please, as we sing our last song? He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Now, this the grandest name through the ages. Now, this the grandest name for a mortal time. This the grandest name that the world knows. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Go by sea. Press, go to him for as our God is able to deliver the on the second is the grandest name in the earth or main is the grandest name for a mortal swing is 
have a word of prayer our gracious God Heavenly Father we are so thankful for giving us this wonderful morning thank you Lord for the message of thy word thank you Lord for using a pastor Max O oh Lord in the midst of us uh, sharing your gospel and sharing your word Lord I pray that uh, your uh, word will um, be seen O oh Lord God in our lives help us O oh Lord to apply it O oh Lord in our daily lives and help us to grow uh, spiritually O oh Lord as a Christian, we need to have um, uh, to increase our faith, O Lord God, in you. And bless um, the message, O Lord, in our hearts, O Lord. And be with our brethren, be with us, O Lord God, for the rest of this day. And also, we would like to thank, O Lord, for the food that we're about to partake with our families and friends. Continue to um, bless this, O Lord, and thank you for providing our needs. Lord, um, thank you, Lord, for everything. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. in Titus chapter 2 verse 13 to 14 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of a great God our Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works the people of God will say Maranatha until he comes again so God, said, God bless everyone and I see you this afternoon thank you Thank you.